Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in James chapter 3 verse 12, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, James chapter 2 verse 11. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Lord God for this word. Thank you for helping us to know who we are connected to. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, James chapter 3, verse 12. Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. Um, so this is just talking about the fact that who you are connected to is what you're going to bear as far as fruit is concerned. Um, if you are connected to the vine of the fig tree, you're going to produce fig, right? If you are connected as a vine to um, to a grapevine, you're going to produce grapes. But if you're connected to a bad source, you're going to produce bad fruit. Um, it, says, can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. You can't have a contaminated source and expect to get something fresh from it. So we have to always analyze the fruit because the fruit is going to reveal what we've been connected to. If you have bad fruit in your life, if you can see the evidence of bad fruit, it means that your, your connection are wrong. It means that your gate has been open to something that which is not of Christ. So we need to analyze the fruit that we're bearing and say, hey, did I open a gate somewhere? Did I open a source or a connection somewhere that is not of you, God? Please reveal those things to me. All right. And so um, the second verse that the Lord gave me was Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need so if you are a person who has seen that you're not bearing fruit or that you're not bearing fruit that's consistent with what you know God is telling you to do. Um, you need to check your source, right? And if your source is not Christ, then you need to repent and then you need to um, reconnect, right? And and it's, it's as simple as, you know, repenting and coming back under that covering, right? Sometimes we wander out, but if you come back under that covering, then you can draw near to the throne of grace with confidence, right? It says, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So not only are you going to receive grace, whatever you need for that circumstance to start bearing fruit, but you're also going to receive that mercy. And we've talked about that before. You'll receive mercy. Um, you should have received vengeance from God, right? For straying. But because Christ's righteous covering is covering you, um, you won't receive that wrath. You will instead receive mercy. Um, and and, and that repentance goes a long way, right? And and his righteous covering, covering us is, is going to be all we need. Amen. All right. And so the third verse that the Lord um, gave me was James chapter two, verse 11. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So this is actually, so this is just revealing the fact that, you know, do, do not reveal, do not trust the law to provide the righteousness that you need, right? That you're never going to be able to achieve um, following all the rules. It's never going to work. It's always going to only point out the sin that is within you and 
cause you to feel condemned, right? Cause you to feel some kind of way. You need the Holy Spirit and you need to be connected to that throne. You need Christ's righteous covering. Um, your perfection is irrelevant at this point. You need Christ's covering. You can't be perfect unless you're covered by Christ. Everything else beneath the standard of perfection is as filthy rags, right? Um, so it says, for he who said, do not commit adultery also said, do not murder. So God doesn't see sin as, oh, this is the, the worst one or this one is the worst one. No, he sees it all as filthy rags. He sees it all as, as falling short. So you need something that is going to assure you up. You need something that is dependable. You need something that is connected to God, something that will never fail you, something that can cover you and grab you and snatch you back once you've repented. And that is Christ Jesus righteousness his covering, which was provided through the atonement of our sins when he died on the cross. All right. And so these are the scriptures that the Lord gave me. Um, let's go ahead and pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this word that you've given us. Help us to connect to you and help the fruit that we have to be evidence of who we are connected to. Lord Jesus, let us bear much, much, much good fruit, Lord Jesus. Help us to be um, what you desire us to be in our fruit bearing. Lord God, we ask you to help us as we remember to draw near to the throne of grace. Lord Jesus, let us receive so much grace and great mercy um, in our time of need, Lord Jesus. We know you'll provide us every resource that we need to, to be able to bear that good fruit, Lord. We give you thanks and praise for that. And then, Lord God, we also ask you to help us not to fall back on relying on the law, Lord Jesus, help us to lean hard on Christ. Help us to lean hard on your grace and your mercy and not on our perfection and our righteousness, Lord God. Help us to only be um, leaning and trusting in Christ for his righteousness to cover us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you have would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And that is what you are going to do. Um, one of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So seek his face today while he may be found. Also, go ahead and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you to a church home, other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as um, others uh, so that you can tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Also, uh, be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.